So we're going to show you this entire half plane. But you guys going to feel okay with these two examples. Cool. Now let's look at what happens at something like this. This doesn't look a whole lot like these examples. You with me on that? Can we do the same thing that we did over here? Well, first thing, if you're going to try to do this, you're going to have to get it in the correct form. How can I get it in the correct form to use this? I could subtract y and get 0, or I could subtract 3x from both sides. Either way would work, okay? Let's subtract 3x. Don't write this down. I want you to see something. All right? Don't write this down yet. I want you to see something. If I subtract 3x, I get negative 3x plus y is less than 0. I'm writing it that way because that's standard form. Do you guys see the standard form? Mm -hmm. Now, let's try to do this method with that problem. You ready for it? Here's what you do, right? You'd write x-intercept. You'd write y-intercept. In order to get the x-intercept, you would cover up the y. Well, you'd set it equal, right? Firstly, you'd cover up the y and you'd get negative 3x equals 0. True? And you would get x equals, x equals how much? Definitely divide by 3, negative 3. You get zero. But then in order to get the y-intercept, you'd cover up the whole x term, wouldn't you? And you'd go, oh, okay. y equals zero. Wait a minute. Wait, hang on. Let's grab our intercepts. x equals zero. You know where x equals zero is? Orange. You know where y equals zero is? Orange. Uh-oh. How many points do I have? How many points do you need to graph a line? Two. Can you just go, oh, there's one point. I know it looks like this. <laughs> Yay! No. No, we can't do that, right? Because there's an infinite number of possible lines you can go through that. We have no idea how that looks. This one's not going to look like that. In fact, this one's going to look much steeper than that. This is a slope of 3 over 1. So you're not going to have that look of a line. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that this method works great if you have a number here and here. However, there's certain cases where you cannot use this cover-up method that I taught you, this, the standard form version of graphing line. Are you with me on this? You can't do that. So write this down. You can write this example if you'd like, but make sure you write this down. If you have ax plus by less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, whatever the inequality is, and a zero over there. You cannot use the standard form version of graphing line because look, look what happens, folks. If you cover this up, you get zero. If you cover that up, you get zero, right? That means you get the same point twice. There's no way to graph a line with the same point twice. You can't do that. If you have this, you must use slope intercept. Only other way we got. Here, this whole issue, if you don't have, if, can you see it right away, by the way? Look at the board here with me. Can you see it right away that you have no constant term over here? Mm -hmm. There's no constant. Here there's a constant, here there's a constant. That means you can do it. Over here, when you don't have a constant, all of this nonsense is not going to work because of this reason. Because of that reason right there. You have the same point twice. That's not going to happen. Okay, so if this doesn't work. If that doesn't work, we have to use the slope-intercept form of the line. But check it out. That's already in slope-intercept form, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Why? Well, we're going to make it equals. But let's temporarily make it equals. I'll, I'll write this problem over right here. Y is less than 3x. If we don't have a constant term, leave it in y-intercept or make it y-intercept. We're going to set this equal to y equals 3x. Or we're going to make that y equals 3x. Hey, can you graph y equals 3x? Mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your intercept there? Zero. Y zero. 
there. <laughs> Do you guys see there, there's no constant, right? That inherently means that you're, you're crossing at the origin. Not your head if you're with me on that. So we had the same situation, right? We know it intersects at zero. If you would have done this, you would have seen that. So since we have no intercept, we already know we're, we're still at that point, for sure. We're still there. What's your slope? Three over one. Three over one. What does three over one tell you? Are you going to go up or are you going to go down? Up. up. up how many? Three. And over to the? Right. How many? One. So what this says is from this point, do you see where I'm getting this point, by the way? Are you sure you're okay with that one? Because some people are like, I don't know where it's coming from. Where this is coming from is because we don't have a constant. We're, it's plus zero. This is of that form, right? This is crossing at zero, right there. Zero. The B is zero. And then we're going to use our slope, which is three over one. To go up three because it's positive, over to the right because it's over one. And this is three over one. We graph our line. It's certainly not a 45 degree angle. It's much steeper than that. So we would have had the wrong idea if we just guessed at this. We graph our line. I need a show of hands to see if you're okay on just graphing this at least. You guys over here, yes? You guys on the right hand side? Okay. Is this supposed to be solid or dotted? Dotted. Good. Why? Yeah, we look right here, or at the original. Okay, so we got that far, but now I have to shade it. Can I use the point zero, zero? No. No, no if you plug that in, it's not going to work, first of all, but then it doesn't even tell you what side it's going to, we need to shade. So if you can't check zero, zero, you can check almost any other point that you want, as long as it's not on the line. If you can't use 0, 0, I'm going to pick like 0, 1. That's the one I always go with, 0, 1. If 0, 0 doesn't work, 0, 1 will work. Unless you have a vertical line at the y-axis, but that's generally not going to happen. Check 0, 1. Identify where 0, 1 is. Look at the board with me, please, real quick. 0, 1. Is this 0, 1 right there? Is this 0, 1 right there? Yes. Yes, that's 0, 1. So don't get those confused, right? Because if you mark down the wrong point, you're going to shade the wrong side of the line. So if I'm using 0, 1, I need to make sure I'm checking that point right there. That's the one I'm looking at. What's my, what's my x coordinate, the 0 or the 1 here, folks? Zero. Zero. So I'm going to plug in 0 for the x. And what am I going to plug in for the y? y is 1. So y is less than 3x. I use this. And I go, OK, y is 1. That's 1. Less than 3 times 0 x is 0. So I get 1 is less than 0. 3 times 0 is 0. Is 1 less than 0? Is that a true statement or a false no. statement? False. Definitely false. Here's what we did. We checked this point right here, 0, 1, because we couldn't check 0, 0. 0, 0 is on the line. Can't check that. We checked 0, 1. 0 for x. 1 for y. That fills out our inequality for us. We make sure we check this down, see if it's true or false. 1 is less than 0. 1 is not less than 0. That means it's a false statement. So here's what happened. We checked this point, and it was false. Are we going to shade the top side or the bottom side? Bottom, bottom. Definitely. And that's a perfectly fine looking graph. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with that one? Good. Let's try one more of these really to get the hang of this, and then uh, we'll continue. <laughs> that was such a good example, things are raining from the heavens. Did you see that? <laughs> see? That had a little help. Can't believe I just referred to this college of ceilings as the heavens. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not my idea. Heaven. Okay, anyway.
x greater than 3y. x greater than 3y. First thing, do you think I'm going to be able to use the cover-up method in this example? What do you think? No. Do I have a constant term? Yeah. So even if I were to get this all to one side, check this out, even if I were to subtract 3y, I would get x minus 3y is greater than what? Zero. That means if I cover up two things, I would get zero in both of them. This is telling me right here, I hope you listen to this, this is telling me that this line is going to go through the origin. Nod your head if you're with me. For sure. Because those, both intercepts are zero. I mean, you're going to go through the origin at some point. So if this is not, oh my gosh, if this isn't the, the intercept method, what are we going to do? Slope intercept. Slope intercept. So we're going to temporarily set this equal to zero. Or, I'm sorry, set the uh, inequality as an equal sign. And somehow manipulate that until you get slope intercept form. Is this in slope intercept form? No. no. I need a y by itself in order to get slope intercept form. How do I do that? Okay, well, I could change sides, first of all, right? Maybe change sides. So instead of x equals 3y, I get 3y equals x. We like to see the y on the left-hand side for some reason. It looks more natural to us. But then I don't want a 3y, I want a y. How do I get rid of 3? If I divide, please watch up here for a second. This side is going to be y. Are you with me on that? Right hand side is x over 3. You can always write x over 3 as 1 third x. You can always do that. x over 3 is 1 third times x. Do you see why? If you don't see why, think of this as 1 over 3 times x over 1. If you multiply those, you're going to get x over 3, right? We're just breaking it up. Hey, is that slope intercept form? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can do that. So what's our y-intercept? Yeah. I need you all to participate on this. What's your y-intercept here? Yeah. Sure, there's no number over here. Hey, that's why we did this in the first place, right? There's no constant, meaning I'm going to cross it at zero. So on my xy-axis, I, I, I knew initially I'm crossing it at zero, but this proves it. I have no number after that x. That means our intercept, our b, is zero. We're crossing at the origin. What is my slope, everybody? One third. Am I going to go up or down? Uh, How much? One third. And then over to the right. right. How much? Three. No tables. Right. No tables. From our origin, because we we plotted zero here, because our b was zero, we're going to go up one. We're going to go over three. And we're going to put a point there. Up one over three. Let's draw our line. Leave it solid, make it dashed. Which one? Dash. Definitely dashed. We have to also check a point. Because we need to shade this thing. Are we going to check 0, 0? Hey, look at that. Are we going to check 0, 0? No. Ah, we can't. It's going right through there. We can't check that point. What point are we going to check, maybe? Zero, zero, yeah, it's B. Oh, I don't care what point you pick. But be consistent about it. That way you're not just messing, you know, getting all these different points up there. Be consistent. Check one of two points. Check zero, 0 if you can. If you can't check zero, 0, pick another one that you always check. Okay? Don't make it something like 1, 1. Uh, make it something with a 0 in it. Because if, if the origin doesn't work, either the point right above it, that one's probably going to work almost all the time. Unless you have a vertical line right here that's going to happen. Pick that point. Pick like zero, 1 or zero, 02 or something like that. 